Monsignor Borsky obviously is a huge part of our seminary's history. He was the first diocesan priest after many, many years to uh, take the reins of this institution. And uh, coming in at a time when there was a lot happening in the church, in the world, uh, he came in and was able to execute uh, a vision for priestly formation that I think in many ways perdures today. And he walked into a situation where a religious congregation, the Vincentians, had left and, and he was going to take over and to be the rector and have to direct and give leadership to a diocesan seminary. And he told me what a challenge that was. But uh, 19 or 20 years there, he really did an amazing job. And uh, he is still fondly remembered now. And he came um, regularly on Wednesdays to celebrate Mass. He would sit right here, say Mass, on that little table right here. And we would, I mean, it just was a really, he made you feel holy. <laughs> <laughs> there was something about him. He's the preeminent pastor in everything. It's just, it oozes out of him. He's, it, it's not just something he learned, it's something he is. Mm -hmm. um, walked into the seminary, um, and when I laid eyes on him, and he started speaking, I thought to myself, this is going to be a journey. Tall kind of uh, soft, direct spoken uh, Texan. And I said, and here I am a Jersey girl. I said, how is this gonna work out? But it did. We had an elderly nun at that point, um, Lucy Lamy, and, and they became very good friends. When Lucy was dying, she was in hospice. Chester came and said mass in her room. People would gather around her bed. And that was, for us, a precious, precious memory. Chester Borsky, is a, he's an all-around guy, a farm boy raised in Anderson, and he really fits in with everybody. And I'll never forget uh, one hunt, we were really struggling, and he, at Mass, uh, during the blessings, asked that God bless the hunters, and may we have good luck and, and good hunting. And uh, that evening, he went out and shot the largest elk ever killed in the 40-year history of that ranch. Monstrous animal. Uh, Boone and Crockett, like a 380, which is huge. And everybody was so excited for the Monsignor that he was the one that got the elk rather than one of them. I was part of the capital campaign on going through and, and working to, uh, to finance you know, that whole deal. And, uh, and I w would, I would laugh with him. And, and go, you know, this is all your fault. Because uh, when he, I think when he was talking with the bishop about leaving the, the seminary and going back out to a, you know, to be a pastor in a parish, you know, uh, I know his wish was to not go somewhere where he was gonna have to be involved in building and fundraising and capital campaigns and all of that. And sure enough, that's right where we wound up in the, you know, in the middle of it. Um, and I would, I'd laugh and I'd go, if you weren't so good and we weren't growing, uh, we wouldn't have this issue. So just look in the mirror. In 1985, I made a visit to St. Mary's Seminary. And that's where I met Monsignor Borsky and of course the rest of the staff. And then of course the following year, I came to seminary at St. Mary's and did not know at the time, but learned later what a blessing God had given me in Monsignor Borsky's leadership and in later years, after I was ordained and was invited to go camping with his camping group up into Wyoming, I learned what a great hiker he is and what a great fisherman and a master chef over an open fire. Well, it's that famous fish story. In, one of those, uh, in going to uh, Wyoming camping, one day Monsignor Jamail went walking and got lost. And he was panicking. Boisky had found this long, big brown trout that lived under this particular rock on this on Big Goose Creek. And he caught it at the same time that Jamail was coming back from being lost. And he was so happy to be, to find the camp. And Boisky had, had, had been trying to catch this same fish five years, you know, and it hid under this particular rock in, in the creek. 
and he got it. And as he pulled it out on this gravel beach, the hook came out. So he threw himself in this fr frozen water. I mean, you know how mountain water is, to make himself a human dam so that fish wouldn't get away, and he caught it. It was the largest fish. I think it was 29-inch brown trout. Wow. That's the most memorable. <laughs> so one year, he, I got a phone call one day, and he said, Sharon, I, um, I have somebody who usually does the duck gumbo, but he's sick, and he can't do it. Is there any way you could make the duck gumbo? I said, sure, I can happily do that for you. It was lovely, lots of people, huge dinner. So all of a sudden, I feel this hand on my shoulder, and it was Bishop Fiorenza, and he says, I understand that you made the duck gumbo. And I said, I did. And he, I said, did you have any? And he said, oh, thank God you made the gumbo. I don't really care for any of this uh, game stuff. <laughs> so I had the gumbo, and it was delicious. But it was the only thing I enjoy. Of the, of the, I come only for Chester. Um, oh my. And I, oh. I thank God that you made the gumbo because I enjoyed it. Um, and I just chuckled. In Proverbs, it says, without a vision, the people perish. Well, with his vision, I think Shalom Center grew and expanded to the extent that when I first started, there were about 26 centers in the United States. And now Shalom Center is one of only about three or four centers over the last, that has survived over the last 20-some um, years. Mm -hmm. So I think he contributed um, to who and what Shalom Center is. And also he really contributed by believing in me and believing in my own leadership. He's uh, my model of what a priest should do, how he should act, the example, and, and live his life. He's been a wonderful minister for 56 years or so. We're on the same page in almost anything except politics. I do want to say, though, I want to thank him and I want to congratulate him on all of the good work he's done in this local church. And I'm so pleased uh, that we are giving him this Monsignor uh, Kerwin Award. On behalf of the community of St. Mary's Seminary, we are pleased to honor Monsignor Chester Borsky with the Monsignor Kerwin Medal.